hope y'all are having an amazing day today. We're one day closer, guys. Watching and waiting for our blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be sharing a little bit today about the difference between the rapture and the second coming. Yeah. First, I want to preface that I am not a pastor, I am not a teacher, I am not a counselor. I am simply a redeemed member of the body of Christ, brought back from the brink of death and destruction and a prodigal lifestyle addiction, and that lifestyle that accompanies it for such a time as this. Who knows that we're living in the last days, the last moments, the last nanoseconds. Thank you, Jesus. And the church is about to leave. The bride of Christ is going to a wedding. All right, so guys, like I said, I'm not a pastor, not a teacher, not a counselor, but I feel it strongly on my heart. You know, obviously this channel is a pre-trib, 100% pre-trib channel. Um, what is pre-trib? Pre-trib is... That trumpet is going to sound soon and very soon, at any second, I believe. None of us know the day, second, or nanosecond that's going to happen, but it is going to happen very soon, guys. That trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive and remain, this final generation, I believe, with all of my heart, will be caught up together with the Lord, with them in the clouds, and ever so be with our Lord. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words, encourage one another as we see the day approaching. And guys, that day is approaching like a freight train, so if you're not on board, I wouldn't wait. Don't delay if procrastination is your thing. You don't want to be left here in the seven-year tribulation of which they are setting up all around us it's kind of obvious by now all right so i want to share out of first my poetic justice my second book this is called checkmate the prodigals that i lead you to will not look like my sheep from high cliffs they have fallen plunging so very deep the prodigals that I send your way have been judged harshly by the goats, injured so very deeply, and tossed to the bottom of my boat. These ones are like a pawn in the vicious hand of the enemy. He plays them like a chess piece because of the wounds of the religious unfriendly. Just like you, they got up and walked away, unaware that I'm still in my boat. Lead them to the captain of this vessel child. Help them stay afloat. Your purpose in this mission is to shine my light at the game. Point it right in Satan's face. Show my sheep from whence this trouble came. Extend your hand and lead them, not to a religion or a man. Gently love them until they can believe for themselves the full revelation of who I am. That is prodigals, many prodigals, as I, I was saved at the age of 11, got up and walked away from the traditional brick and mortar church, didn't want to be like all those other sheep. But the enemy, you know there is an enemy. Satan is a liar. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's, he lies pretty well, guys. You know, I hate to give him a compliment, but he is a liar. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. And once he puts a lie in our head, you know, we believe it and receive it. But, you know, uh, he tells us we got to be fit into this traditional religious game, you know, but, that they're playing. And I didn't want to be like those sheep. So, you know what? I got up and walked away, got saved, truly born again. Jesus leaves the 99 and goes after the one. Because once we belong to him, we are eternally secure eternally you know why because god is not a man that he should lie our salvation is just that eternal it's just that free for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe should not perish but have everlasting life 
And although I believe that at the age of 11, having grown up in a Catholic school and having had a lot of false doctrine that uh, was baited and I, I took the bait and a lot of early childhood trauma and just a lot of different lies that the enemy pointed in my direction. Yeah, I just got up and walked away. I didn't want to be like those sheep. I didn't want to be in that traditional religious game. When the fact of the matter is, God doesn't want us to fit into some mold of Christianity. He doesn't want us to be like all the other sheep. Christian, you are uniquely and peculiarly different. We are peculiar, all right. Believe that for such a time as this. And he doesn't want us to fit into some kind of mold. We all have different game, uh, gifts. I just saw a little fish jump out of that water. I wonder if he'll do it again. Come on, little fish. Anyway, so yes, we all have different gifts in the body of Christ and we function as a body. We're not supposed to fit into some traditional whatever that pastor is saying, submit to that kind of leadership. You know, God gave me the wisdom to rebel against that traditional religious spirit. And there are religious spirits out there. But okay, but the reason I came on today is to share the difference between the rapture and the second coming. But first, I want to share the gospel. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, you're not born again. Jesus said you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's not about religion, obviously. It's about having a personal relationship with a God who loves you eternally. We all live eternally, friend. Whether you choose to believe that or not is up to you. People say, I don't want to serve a God who would send people to hell. Well, he doesn't send people to hell. He's given us a will. We freely choose. And that's the lie of the enemy, is that, oh, if God were really real, then this wouldn't have happened to you. If God were really real, this wouldn't be happening in Israel. And all these children wouldn't be, if God were really real, this wouldn't be happening. Take the word if out of your vocabulary, because God is really real. The wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. I would receive that gift today, guys. How do we do that? We simply A, admit, yes, I'm a sinner in need of a savior. B is to believe, and this is key, believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. And C, call upon his name. The Bible says all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Not might be saved if you complete a program or might be saved if you join a church. Or we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. People like to boast in that church. Some of them, Jesus will have to say, depart from me, I never knew you. It's going to be a sad, sad day. And you know, there may be atheists today, but you may be an atheist today, but you won't always be because the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So you want to do that on this side of heaven or you stand before God. All right, so we got the Great American Eclipse coming up April 8th. You know, we got all of this war going on in Israel right now. So much is going on, guys. Don't be blinded by deception. Jesus said the number one thing would be deception in the end days. And we are in the end days. And God is about to step in, as prophesied in the Bible. You know, the U.S. is telling Israel to cease fire and you know, for humanitarian reasons. Uh, U.S. is toast, guys. The United States is, I don't want to get into the, all that, but, you know, every other religion requires that we do something, and, you know, even then, there's no promise of heaven. 
But Jesus said, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So do that today. I would not wait. I mean, you could walk out your front door today. None of us know our last day upon this earth. None of us. And nobody likes to talk about death, you know? Nobody likes to talk about religion, death, politics. This channel certainly is not about politics. But you know what? Eternity is a long time to be wrong, guys. A whole long time to be wrong. Because this life that we live here is but a vapor. It's like a morning fog. It's here and it's gone. Whether we live 50, 70, 80 years, however long, if we're blessed enough to live that long. And we're getting in some perilous, perilous times, guys, with AI and all of this deception that's coming up. Jesus is the truth, the life, and the way. No man comes to the Father except through him. If you want to know the truth, come to Jesus Christ. Because, you know, things look like the truth. I mean, look at AI, how they've, you know, these things look, look so real. If we didn't have Jesus and we didn't know, and we didn't have discernment, discernment comes from the Holy Spirit. And at the moment of salvation, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. And he's our counselor, our teacher, our guide, our best friend. He shows us what's up. He shows us what's up. And he'll show us, don't believe that, don't trust that. Yeah. Even though our flesh can be telling us, oh yeah, go for this, go for that. There is a Holy Spirit inside us will be screaming, no, this isn't the truth. And the truth will set us free, guys. 100%. Truth will set you free. But if you don't know the truth, yeah, you'll fall for anything. You don't believe, well, they, they say if you don't believe in something, you'll fall for anything. But if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, who is the truth, the life, and the way, you will fall for anything. And things are looking more and more real today. So, I wouldn't wait. I wouldn't wait. Hope you guys are on board with journaling. We're still on the letter K Sunday. We'll be changing it to the letter L. L is for Lord, love. Jesus is the love of our life. Um, I might have to wrap this up because there's some people coming down here. Let me see. Or I might just go to the end of the pier here. We'll see. All right, so there is a generation of Christians who will not die, who will be raptured on our feet. And I believe that we are that generation. Um, I'm going to need to wrap this up. Um, and I'll start another video starting with the difference between the rapture and the second coming. Love you guys. Uh, we'll be back on 